and welcome to my video and today we're going to be talking and doing a full collection tour of all my teas which is I've got 43 tarantulas and they vary from sizes from 8 centimeters about three and a half inches down to um, about the same size as your fingernail so literally so yeah swings up to juvies so yeah and we've also got the frogs I'm going to show you and the mantids and try and fit everything into one video if I can so yeah what we're going to do is we're going to go through the bigger tees first because obviously they're all connected to the heat mats behind so I don't really want to be moving them sorry about that just uh, sorting out more Gorilla Grips my uh, camera stand so yeah pretty much this one is my Postletheria Sofusca Lowland he is, no sorry, my bad. That is my Postal Ethereum Sofusca Lowland. Which you can probably just about make out her leg. Just about. Yeah, she's about eight, eight centimeters, but just over three and a half inches. And it's a uh, suspect female. I've still got to uh, sex it ventrally. I think I've probably said that wrong, but oh well. This is my Rufalata, Postletheria, Postletheria Rufalata, which is also about the same size, about three and a half inches. We've also, we've got my Postletheria Formosa which let me just have a look on the top make sure she's not around there and I'll open it up as you can see they do like webbing up a little bit this has just had a shed about a week ago so I'm just gonna so a quick Hello and uh, goodbye. As you can see, this is the thermostat wire that connects all my mat stats, the controllers for uh, the temperature, so, which is an absolute must if you've got heat mats. It prevents overheating. So yeah. Then we have my Postletheria regalis called Hope. Now, as you can see, I'm really gently with this. And you can see her at the back, she's a big girl. She's a very big girl. She's just molted, probably about, about two weeks ago now, give or take. And she is, well, awesome looking. So, one of the biggest teas I have in my collection now, this one is, my Regalis. Very strikingly lovely looking tea. It's my P Metallica. And if you can see, there she is. Yep. Lovely markings on the inside, underside of her. Then we have, what I'll do is I'll come back to the smaller 32 ounce cups after we've done the bigger ones. So going down the level, we're going on to my Postletheria Tigrina Westelli. Tiger, Westwall's Tiger Ornamental which 
if I move this out of the way. Move my Haitian brown in there. I'll probably see that top top. There she is. Sorry about the uh, awkwardness, but uh, it's very inaccessible when you have a racking system. Or sometimes it can be. But yeah, that is my Postoliferia retigrina wesseli. And we have my P. ornata, the fringed ornamental. Which, as you can see, is completely blocked up her entrance, and I believe at the moment is in the process of uh, shedding. So, just a quick look, and you can see the previous malt there from when she malted last time. Right, on to the next one, which is my. Summer purse, a minia, the <coughs> Venezuelan sun tiger, which is, I think this was my first tarantula, and she's in the corner, or was. This actual tea didn't bother actually using, sorry about the inaccessibleness. She didn't actually use her cork bark when I made it. I dug it onto the substrate at the back. And what she did was she made a silk-like cocoon that stretched halfway up the one side of the uh, enclosure. And it goes all the way from the bottom where the substrate is, where the sphagnum moss is, all the way to the back and up. So yeah, it's a very intricate way of Making a burrow that one is. Right then. Now we're going to move on to some of these bigger ones. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move all this over there onto my workstation and uh, get this prepared. Be back in a minute, guys. Hi, welcome back. And in front of us we have my P. Hanumivala and Postlethiri Hanumavalisumika. Sorry about that, my mispronunciation. Mispronunciation. I can talk properly today. There she is. Gorgeous. Gorgeous looking tea. Very hungry tea, this one is. Or loves its food. I'm just going to go through a couple of my collection now in the 32 ounce cups and uh, possibly feed a couple as well. A little treat for you guys at home. If I can grab one of these, yeah. love this tea. Probably one of the rarer teas that I have in my collection. But as you can see, gorgeous looking. Absolutely stunning. I love the markings on this tea as well. And this I'm not assuming it, but I'm I'm about 80% certain that this is a female. Um, ventrally I have seen a little slit on the underside of her abdomen and I've done a little couple of bit of research online and uh, the coloration in the abdomen on the tail you know the white bit that surrounds the black stripy bit usually if the black stripy bit is more pronounced than the outside of the white bit it's eight times out of ten it's usually a female but 
I could be wrong. So I hope I'm not. Yeah, right, I'm gonna uh, move on to the next one that we have. I'm gonna quickly spray this. Just a little tad. There we go. Right then. This back on. This is my postletheria fasciata. She comes. It's only a mini miniature mealworm. Oh, oh, there you go. And she's uh, managed to. Rip hold of that and take it down. So yeah, moving on to the next one guys. This is my Terinoculus marinus or Sambara. The orange bitey thing. So if you can have a look, he's just down there. So yeah, that's my OBT. Give it a quick. And, uh, I might try and see if it wants to feed for you guys at home. For any of uh, any of you use that missed the last feeding video that I did, I think it was a couple of videos back, and I uh, featured this in the video. I think it gave up uh, a bit of a threat posture. It was quite funny. Right, moving on guys, this is Ghost, my Postletheria Vitata, the Peterson's Ghost Ornamental. with a mealworm. It's just specifically so you guys can see. Tea that usually comes straight out. If I mess around with anything, it's in, it, in its enclosure. It's on it straight away. 
Yeah, unfortunately, we'll be able to see this one. Well done, guys. On to the next. This is my Formictopus species green gold carapax. Now, this tea is quite a rare tarantula. Quite lucky to have found one of these. No, there's not many of these in the hobby or within the hobby at the moment or that I've been able to find anyway. I know that there is people that are out there that have got them but I think it's a, a case of they're really young or they're a bit older. So yeah. Well yeah, it's a lovely tea. Absolutely gorgeous tea. I'm going to try and feed it a bit of a mealworm. See if it takes it down. Mm, nope. Not today. Yeah, that tea is absolutely gorgeous. Stunning tea. Hi, welcome back. This is my Formictopus cancerides, my Haitian brown. Suspect female again. Also, um, my Postlotheria striata and my Postlotheria metallica are both in pre mold so I won't be including them in this video. <clears throat> and what we're going to do is Chuck in a mealworm for this little dude. So this is like complete tour video slash feed in a couple of teas as well at the same time. So yeah, and this one will actually take them off the tongs. So I'm gonna attempt my first off the tongue feed and hope that it goes well as it can be. Find a decent enough worm. in a minute. Right, can I get my tongs back? Oh, look at that. A bit of a threat posture on that one. Hi, welcome back. And I've just noticed my P. regalis hope. And there she is. She is a beautiful specimen. Love the coloration and markings on her back, her abdomen. But yeah, I thought I'd just give you a quick, uh, quick rundown on that tea, due to the fact that she was actually out and about as well. Bear with me a second. Right, so. Where was we? Right, we're just going to 
going to start on the smaller tees in my collection and we're going to start where we finished off you can see there is my Caribbean Versa colour with a cricket in her mouth beautiful coloration on this tee absolutely gorgeous She would go down the bottom, wouldn't she? As you can see, her fat bum. She's nice, well fed, awesome markings. Right then, Martinique pink toe. On to the next one in my collection. Now I will be rehousing at least maybe a dozen, maybe half a dozen to a dozen tees in the next week or so. So yeah, it's going to be uh, all hands on deck, all go go go, pretty much. So this is my Hebrew Paul and Diverse piece. Awesome looking too. I love this too. Got some beautiful markings on the abdomen. All them purples and reds. And you can see. Look at that for coloration. That is just awesome. That is the Amazon Sapphire Pink Tox. Ibrapora Diverse Piece. Ooh. Right on. on to the next. This one is my Heteroscodra Maculata, a Togo Starburst Baboon. And as quite a few of the baboons, it's uh, aggressive, very fast. And uh, this one does actually scare the living out of me sometimes because of how quick it actually moves. I remember when I first got this too. It literally moved from one end of its enclosure to the other quicker than I could blink my eye. So <laughs> I think I just started up the hobby again after 10 years of not having anything to do with teas. So yeah, everything was a bit of an eye opener. Right then, you won't get to see this one because it's very elusive, I'm very sure. Well, I'm not gonna disturb this one too much, but you'll probably just see the tops of the legs there of my Postlethelia smithy. Now this is a critically endangered species of pokey in the wild um, there's probably less than well who knows how many of their species of these are actually left in the wild but i know there's not a lot so yeah that is my postletheria smithy the yellow backed ornamental let me take the lid off on that one she's still fresh on a malt or from a malt should i say This one is my, which one is it actually? Uh, Avicularis species, Peru purple. <clears throat> I don't want to 
destructed to nerf. Nerf its web, should I say. I think this is in pre -mult. Not 100% certain. I don't think you can ever be 100%. But it's got the telltale signs of the pre -mult. So Yeah, I didn't eat its last meal. It's <clears throat> webbed all over the top of its enclosure. And its abdomen is uh, on the plumpish side. So yeah, I'd say 90% certain it's in pre -mult. But Give it a quick light spritz keep it nice and moist especially around the time when they're molted I don't like to wet the substrate too much I like to keep it pretty much dry as long as there's good ventilation for, the, for my Avix very, it's a must with uh, all Avex. Ventilation is the way forward. Right. Uh, you won't see this one, but I'll show you anyway. This is my Mexican, Mexican red rump. Brachypelma vagans. And actually, it might. Last shed. So yeah, actually made itself a little burrow at the bottom of its enclosure. I don't actually see it very much. Oh, the gallus the shed. My little gallus. Sex sling. So yeah, I'm quite happy with that actually. I didn't know that. So yeah, something new you learn every day. Eh? So yeah, right on to the next one. So that is the first box done and dusted. Now we're going to do the middle box, and then the last box, the frogs, and then the mantids. And this is my eye mirror, my trapdoor spider. It's recently shed, and when I fed it, uh, let me just see where its food is. Actually, took it. Yep. So I'm happy with that. It's actually grabbed its food. Yep. Cricket's not in there now. Oh no. Cricket is in there, but it looks like he's moved. Dragged it and half eaten it. Left it in the corner. If you can see where its shed is, shed's about there, and its burrow is in this corner, around about here. Goes down to about there. Give a take. I'm not going to uh, disturb this little critter too much. So on to the next one. My next is my Ceratogyrus darlingi. One of the horned baboons. As you can see, she's got quite a nice fat abdomen on her. And uh, I'm pretty much waiting any day now for her to uh, Shed. She's in pre mort at the moment, like. So, right then, on to the next one. And this is my Grammar Style Lot, I Ringi. The Andre Rios Tarantula. Now, this one is Voracious Eater. As you can see, she loves it. I 
until this one's uh, grabbed its little uh, little snack. I'm not actually feeding these. I'm just like just giving them quick snacks for you guys at home. Just have a look at some of the collection that I have in a better way. Oh, when this uh, scared cricket decides to move, yeah. Down. <laughs> Damn. Feisty little. What do is we'll have another one. Wood. Watch them just like to watch her just lay a little feeding mat on the floor. Don't actually know what the feeding mat is for. It's probably half a dozen different benefits that they benefit from putting a, a web down on the floor. One would probably be to Stop any dirt, debris and whatnot going into their mouth. Um, hygiene, they like to keep clean, etc. Just normal things like that, I would suspect. But yeah, alright, I'm going to shut up and uh, crack on to the next one. This one is the Carabina Laata, Laeta, depending on how you want to pronounce it. I think what I'll do with this one as well is give it a give it a little snack because it looks like it wants one. It's just sat there hanging around. Usually one of the teas I open its enclosure and it's gone down the bottom, so it's uh, I would probably say it wants one to eat. Awesome coloration on this tea. They're like a purpley blue when they're younger and they grow to like a browny olive. Beautiful looking tea. The camera doesn't really do it, this tea any favours. It actually looks better to look at it without the camera. So yeah, the other one is in pre-malt, so I was just going to show you the one of these at the moment. So this one's my partner's, and the other one is my one. It's about the same size, give or take. Right then, we're going to move on to the next one. So now we're going to go on to some of the smaller slings. So there is my Brachypelma Bohemi. Mexican fire leg, closely relating to the Mexican red knee, uh, Brachypelma, Brachypelma hamori. Yep, to the next one. This one is. Mm. 
<clears throat> that is my theme, Charlie. Another one of the horned baboons. Oculus Audatus, which is the, okay, it's the Kilimanjaro baboon, and yep, if you can see, it is just there. That's two weeks ago it shed. It's now just opened up its little burrow at the top. I now know it's ready for some food. Put a little cricket and the jobs are good and there you go. I actually saw that come up and grab it. Awesome. Quite hard to get little teas to actually get them to grab their food on on the uh, on camera anyway. Couple of drops of water. Should do. Not too much water with these. And we've got we're on to the Bracky Palma Vargans, the Mexican River. This is called Jeff. This is my stepson's. And his sling as well. He's just starting to get his red coloration on his abdomen. If you can see the little tiny hairs, they just are actually red in the actual light, but not on the actual camera, unfortunately. A oh, couple of drops. Jobs are good. Un. On to the next one. And this is my Acanthoscuria musculosa, the Brazilian. Black velvet. Got a nice big fat abdomen. Quite a nice looking tea as well. It actually looks like the King Baboon, the same coloration when it's younger anyway. So yeah. I'm not gonna actually I might give it a couple of drops of water. Not ready to be fed yet. So. And now we've got the last box on the top, right hand side, which is this one here. We've done that one, that one, and we've done all the rows, including all the 32 ounces. We've got now the dubia roaches. You all know what you all know what roaches look like. And I've got to show you both the frogs and the mantids. Hi, welcome back. This is my Brachiopalma wapolosum, a Nicaraguan curly hair. And as you can see, she's only small. Yeah. Move on to the next one of this collection tour video. Oh, welcome back. This is my Fuminga chilis species Rufus, the Javan blonde tarantula. <clears throat> one of the most expensive teas in my collection, this one is. Cost me £60. In, it was a one centimetre sling when I got it. 
It's now about, it's about two and a half centimeters, two centimeters, give or take. Can shed twice in my position. So yeah. We'll move on to the next one. Next one is my King Baboon, the P. Muticus. And not 100% certain where it is. There it is. You can just see there by the P. I just see a slight bit of a pink bum. Just moved, I think you might have just seen it. So yeah, I'm not gonna disturb this one. But yeah, that's my King Baboon. Next is my Orphanaceous Species Blue Panel. This one's got some nice intricate webbing going on. There's <clears throat> really stunning markings on colorations on this tee. Yeah. A bit of a dousing water. I've tried to keep this one uh, not too dry but moist. So. To the next collection tour video. Next one is the Cerotogyrus Sanderoi. Namibia horned baboon. This one is. Now this one is only shed once since I've had it. Trickle of water. And on to the next. This is my Brazilian fire red bird eater, Lassiodura difficilis. There's a few springtails in there, a bit more than what I would like in there, but as I've said before in previous videos, they don't do the time to do any harm whatsoever. They're the crew, clean up crew of the enclosures. They stop all the infections and nasty parasites and all sorts build up. They also stop mold. So yeah, it's a, Great idea to keep them. Two more tarantulas left for the complete tour. So we have Post Litheria, Miranda, the Bengal Spotted Ornamental. And there she is. I say she, because I hope that it is. So yeah, there's the one. And the other one has just, just shed, literally in the space of, in the last half an hour. So you can see her, she's just there. Looks all fresh. See ya. And that completes my tour of my whole collection. Which is, as I said before, 43 tarantulas, two praying mantises, and 
two Pac-Man frogs. Um, I'm planning to get about altogether. I want about 150, so I'll probably stop getting teas, well, possibly around about 150 mark. I'll only get ones that are specific. I will go ones I specifically want. Then. So, right, um, loads of bits and pieces there, as you can see. These are the bits and pieces, box wise. And most of my be most of my teas came in, and that some bits and pieces and whatnot, rubbish and that. So yeah, bit of a mess. I'll clean it up later. yeah that completes my tour my tarantulas now i'm going to start on that one and that one male patman frog female patman frog um spiny flower mantis and the budwig mantis Hi, welcome back. Right, here we have some fruit flies, and we have both the mantids. The one connected to the top, the spiny flower mantis, and the other one is he's is actually hiding as soon as I picked up the container. Enclosure, he's there along with another one of his sheds. So, yeah, One's dinner. And this one is spiny flower mantis. He's tiny, very small. So what I'm going to do is. Awesome. There's my little buddy Link. <clears throat> he is an awesome little dude. So yeah, I'm gonna put the other two fruit floors into his into his enclosure. And we're gonna move on to the next which is the two Pac-Man frogs. Hi and welcome back. Now, one question. Can you see her, my Pac-Man frog? Well, I'm gonna point her out anyway, if you can't. She's there. Hide her. Right, I've got 
couple of crickets covered with powder coated with repti calcium so Go. There's one mouthful. What I'll do is I do two to one ratio. So that means I do two crickets covered with reptile calcium, and then a third will be we have Nutribol, Nutribol, which is calcium balancer and multivitamin supplement, uh, which is helps bone growth. So and gives them the multivitamins that they can't get in live food. <clears throat> All right. Trying to find another. <laughs> Good one. So yeah, that is Miss Piggy. My Ceratophrys or Nata. then she was actually struggling to swallow a little bit. Whoa, calm down there. <laughs> She's uh, quite lively this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give her a nice mealworm. Whoa, calm down. Jesus. My fork, my palm. No. Whoa, there. <clears throat> yeah, I love these things. I think they're awesome. Second, I'm just getting the Nutriball out.
Ich muss das sein. So, Leute, das ist nicht so pro Lauf, wie der Füter haben müssen. Hey, Füter. Ja, mal hier. One more. Oh, calm down. Thus, this is why you get bamboo tongs because they've got serious issues with uh, biting things. Little spray, calm down. There we go. So yeah, jobs are good. Right, we're gonna move on to the next one. Hi and welcome back. And this is the male Pac-Man frog. So a two freezer or nata. So yeah, I'm gonna Get the old uh, calcium out. So this one actually likes me to just drop them in. Oh. And he'll, uh, he goes after them himself, like that. Whereas the other one likes me to feed her. So, I think she's a bit lazy. He got him, but I don't think he's uh, properly got him in his mouth yet. As you can see, well, he has now. New enough. Hmm. I wonder how he's going to do this now. I'm quite intrigued. So I'm going to. him in a little bit. Let's see what he does. Well, he dropped it. Good lad. So yeah, and that wraps up my full, complete full tour 
of all my animals. I hope you liked this video guys and if you like these kind of videos comment in the section below and let me know what you think of these uh, new style of videos I'm doing. So yeah, it's been emotional guys. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my videos and my channel please. And I will see you in my next video guys. Take it easy, all the best.